Today, the Adelphi has a young visitor, Ellis McGuinness. She's now seven months old, and her mum, Christine, is back on reception. I'm not staying late today. Plus, my, my baby's coming, and we're going out for the afternoon. The baby's coming to pick me up. Bless her. Is he shoes? Is he shoes? Last time we met Christine, she was heavily pregnant. And she wasn't the only expectant mum on the day the hotel hosted three weddings. The Adelphi will host 50 Liverpool weddings this summer. Today, to cope with six newlyweds and their 350 guests, operations manager Brian Birchall needs all of his 49 staff. Sonia, are you wearing something this time tonight? Something come up and I can't do it. Why not? Well, something else come up and I was asked about two weeks ago, and I definitely can't. Sorry. Sorry, honey. All right. Bye. Brian's only just arrived, and he's already one waitress short to look after three weddings and an orchestra. By the time he reaches his office, six more staff have jilted him. Two staff down on one wedding, one down on another, and three down on another. I'm gonna try and replace Sonia now. Hello? Hello, Becky. Joanne. Joanna's Becca there? No, uh, uh, I wanted you, Brian. Oh, you wanted me, why? Yeah, to tell you I'm coming to work. Oh, I love you. <laughs> You're definitely coming in? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, I've just got a smile on my face for a change. <laughs> All right then, Joanne. All right, oh. bye. Ooh, bit of good news. That was one of the ones that cancelled yesterday coming in today. So we're not doing too bad now. As Brian gradually makes up the numbers for today's weddings, bridal coordinator Marilyn Vaughan is having trouble with the previous marriage. We've got a bit of a problem, actually, with the bridal suite for Michelle and Elliot. They've requested it for tonight. But we had a wedding couple in here last night. Didn't have their wedding here. But they booked the room, and now they won't get out. Hello. Um, I'll come back later. Come back later, Tony the maid. Any late departure is an added pressure for housekeeping. The hotel is fully booked, and they have seven hours to clean 391 rooms. <laughs> The Young Musician Symphony Orchestra has two hours to rehearse four pieces. They've promised to finish by lunchtime so the hotel can prepare the room for the third wedding. By four o'clock, 100 music stands have to be replaced with 25 fully decorated tables. This and the rest of today's schedule are all down to Brian. Well, I've just heard there's a march going past the front of the hotel and the first wedding's due to arrive now. So I'm just gonna see what's happening, if there's gonna be any delays. Closed off the road, the bride and groom, they're due. They're not going to be able to get through. At least the bride's delay gives Brian time for his own wedding day ritual. <sighs> With walking on carpets all day, your feet get destroyed, and as soon as you hit the outside world, you can't walk. That's why I love it on my days off. All I ever wear is training shoes, because you bounce all over the place, I'm like Mr Cool. The new Mr. and Mrs. Minchel's special day is also important for Robbie. He's been promoted to head waiter, and this is the first wedding he's been in charge of. After today's three weddings, Marilyn will have seen 300 happy couples begin their future life together. Some of the couples that I meet that are going to get married and we organize their wedding, you have doubts as to whether the, the wedding will last, really. Congratulations. I'm Robbie, I'll be looking after you throughout the day. Quite a high divorce rate these days, isn't it? One in three, so... Chances are they're not all gonna last. Like to follow me? The hotel's most important partnership is between Brian and executive chef David Smith. Chef, they're having a the line-up, so they're gonna take ages sitting down. I'm just gonna get them to the line-up now. Get the bread rolls out now. I'll get the starters when they've all sat down. They've been together now for five years, and the strain's beginning to show. Three weddings, and the bride and groom has just arrived, but we don't know which one, because he omitted to tell us that. I mean, are they real, or what, these people? Never been the same since he had one of those, uh, what they call, the bottomies. Women? Hey, it might have been, yeah. <laughs> Good God, I don't know. And the trouble is, they want to get paid. 
I mean, I wouldn't pay and wash, isn't he? I wouldn't. Can we do an ashtray clear in here, please? General Manager Eileen Downey spent her own wedding night at the Adelphi. She knows how important it is for every detail to be perfect. I asked you to change the ashtrays. And you don't do it, do you? Change the ashtrays. Well, did you wipe the dirty table? Yeah. You did. Oh, no, I never done Save Stevens on the table. Well, why didn't you do them all? Why didn't you put ashtrays on them all? Why do I have to? How old are you, son? 17. 17. You're like a 12 year old. Did you get any exams at school? Yeah. Did you get there on your own without your mother taking you? Ladies and gentlemen, can you please be upstanding to welcome your bride and groom? Just follow me. One announcement down. Robbie has five more to go. <laughs> Hopefully Brian's training will have paid off. You may sit. You may sit. Well, at least I don't say sit like you do. Hello. <laughs> you may sit. When did you get to punch? Polite. When did you get to punch? Bernie. Yeah. You may sit. <laughs> That's the one on the web. It's better than sit. Who said you may sit? Robbie. 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 You may <laughs> sit. <laughs> Robbie has four more chances to be word perfect, but Eileen's hopes for perfection have been dashed. He's working here, and that's full of broken glass. Is that what we are? But why do I always see it? There's an old green board as you walk up the Derby Terrace. I put that in the bin and order one. Put it. Put it in the bin. All right. Just get it and put, and put, put the bars back. I've saw I have an old nag again. But it just, the you know, things could be just perfect. But there's no stand. I mean, I wouldn't employ him. I wouldn't employ him if I didn't employ anybody. Get rid of them. And that can be your part and gesture as you go for your holidays. One's gone down, it's only nearly half an hour, uh, no, we're talking 45 minutes late. But it's gone, first one down, so we put it there, so we know. And then we move that one up there like that, and that's the second one. On the second floor, changes are causing problems. It's been decided that some maids will now have to clean 14 rooms a day. For Pat, it may prove too, too many. I think if they didn't give us the extra rooms they do, it'd be a good job. If, we, if they stuck to the 12 rooms, you could do everything in the room, like skirts. If they kept to the 12 rooms, I don't think half the maids would be leaving. At least there's harmony in the banqueting hall. As the orchestra starts the second movement of Tchaikovsky's fourth symphony, bride number two leaves the church on time. It's only a 10-minute journey, and the kitchen's on schedule. But unknown to chef, the bride stopped for a photo call. Right, Bonnie, stand next to Charles. They're 20 minutes late, up to press, and it doesn't bother, it doesn't bother us as long as we know. There's only one thing that irritates chef more than waiters, wedding photographers. It's not the bride's fault, is it? It's not the groom's fault. It's this bonker with a, with a camera, this pinhole camera. Right, and the bridesmaids, please. They want to come in after they've had their photographs done and come and eat our food, then have a few drinks, and then they, they, they fly off to the sun and all the others party, don't they? But no, he's having them stood there, posing all week. Michelle and Tony began planning the wedding 18 months ago. Seven months ago, they discovered their numbers were going to increase by one. Baby's kicking his staff. Everyone's had to make adjustments. She's been down to the wedding dress shop about once a week to have it taken out and out and out. I've been on a first aid course and I was a delivery baby. Why did you boil the water anyway? <laughs> to scold her? Sterilise Take her mind off the pain. <laughs> <laughs> As Michelle sets off for the hotel, another expectant mum's already arrived with her photographs. 20 weeks now, so that's halfway there in pregnancy tour. It's gone down quick, I'm doing the rounds to so show everybody. Senior receptionist Christine has just had her five-month scan. Yeah. Oh, I, 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 I love you, guest. 
Oh, it's like it's smiling, doesn't it, look? Yeah. <laughs> Looks like me, don't you think? Gorgeous. Can you go like that? She has four months to wait for her delivery, but the second bride's arrival is now imminent. Hats. <laughs> gorgeous. Four? But I've risen to two. And some bibs when the baby's oh, sick. bibs. We love bibs. Are you going to go with SMA? With us? I am a mother, and I've told you. I woke up no, this wait, morning. No, wait, look, eat it. And it was all over the sheet. Did you? And I went, oh, I've been slobbering because I put on this colour green cheese on the bed last night. I went, oh, no, oh. you're a mum. Oh, no. So that it went means, like that to aim on look. Reception checks to see if there's space in the bridal suite. Hello, Good hi, afternoon. it's reception here. Are you checking again? out today, sir? No, I can't. I can't do it till six o'clock. I haven't got anybody here that will be able to service your room. You say I can do it for three o'clock at the latest, and it'll be, it will be a twenty pounds daylight charge. Upstairs, Pat is halfway through her fourteen rooms. It's just a tiring job. It's all right if you didn't have the extra rooms. It's, but when you've got extra rooms, it's just too tiring. You still do it at the end of the day, but you get <laughs> you just go home and sleep. <laughs> That's it. It's a nice dress you've nearly got on there. Nearly. That's the weird. <laughs> nearly. Wait till that's <laughs> <laughs> Hiya, man. The second Hiya. bridal car with its happy trio has finally arrived. <laughs> Do you want a cup of tea? It's all thanks, Brian. It's all the time. It looks lovely, though. It looks all right. Yeah. I'll get a um, tray for you. But the atmosphere in the canteen is far from peaceful. Servicing the extra rooms has become an issue. Over lunch, some of the maids compare notes. Yeah. So put that on, put that under, put underneath. We need the rooms to go back to 12. The extra rooms, we can't manage with anyway. Two extra rooms. Anything over 12, we used to get an extra pound. But now we're getting more rooms pushed on us and we're not getting any extra money for it. So we don't get paid for the extra now. Here you go, where's your tea? Oh, you want black? No, I put my own milk in. I have it practically black, but can I put my own milk in? If I put my own milk in... Switchboard, can I help you? The hotel's also looking after its own pregnant woman. Christine has been moved from reception back to a job where she can sit down. So this is where it all started for me, here on the switchboard. And I came from working in a bookies, and Katie wasn't too pleased to taking somebody on who worked in a bookies. I showed her and I wake my work to shift leader. So I'm working on switchboard, but it's broken. So I think I should go home. This is the way we fix our equipment. OK. You phone the engineer up and he tells you to pull out all the sockets. Pull out all the sockets and blow. Before Brian can start to set up for the third wedding, he has to wait for the orchestra to finish. Young musicians. Very noisy young musicians. Downstairs, the maids want to settle their own score with a housekeeper. And the room's back to 12. It's got nothing to do with me. You need to speak to Eileen over that, not me. I agree. So I'll go and get Eileen. <coughs> One. Rhythm. Fourth floor. Up to the fourth floor, I'm going to have a chat with some of my maids. Not happy ladies today. The maids have started their afternoon shift, but are still hoping for a group meeting later. It's easier to walk around the hotel and speak to the maids as one-to-one -one, so that they feel like people and not get them en masse, as so that they're just a group of people and that, you know, you're speaking over them. Oh. 
Some of you are doing it, some of you aren't. There's an accent there. Moderato con anima, uh, please. All together now. Are you all right? Yeah. You've no problems? You're busy? Yeah. OK, well, I know it's busy and you've got extras, but if you just bear with me for this week, we'll be all right next week. All right. All right. Yeah. Happy troops. Horns, don't let that accent go by. He's worse than Harley Downing. <laughs> Get away from the shops at me. Got to have authority but lightness at the same at the same time. Oh, Pat. Hi, Alan. Nice. What's your problems? Oh, it's just a bit of everything. Well, we're just busy, Pat. Yeah. Right. Well, I'm not going to have. Yeah. I've been up and spoke to the girls on the fourth, the fifth, and the sixth. They're happy. They're happy. I've spoke to them. Because they're not getting extra rooms. They're right, already. Well, then you don't want the extras. Extra just smaller. give it me. But no, it... Pat. Do you want to take the extras Pat, back? They're not. Mm. Now, if you don't want extras, fine. Give me what you don't want to do, and I'll have it done. Mm. But we, if we don't need to be gossiping amongst ourselves. You don't air it out buzzing in a canteen. Yeah. So we know where we're going. Yeah. Now. But Business. the standards are going to go down. As standards well, won't go down, they? Pat. Your rooms have never gone down. No, mine won't, but others will. Well, we you, had them I, up to standards. The, but getting too I'm there to worry about now. standards, Pat. Yeah. Not you. You look after your section, and I'll do my job. Mm. Okay. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So they're gone. So we can get in the banquet and all. All right then. Thanks very much. That's the young musician's gone now. Just no joy, no joy at all. She knew I was upset, but I don't know, she comes on to you. She frightens you off at times, but. Brian now has an hour to set up the banqueting hall for the final bride. Hello. Hi, honey. You all right? Yeah, beautiful. Jolly good. That one never moans, ever. She won't have a load of us in the office and pro... She might do, I might be wrong. But uh, I don't think the meeting will go on now. They do keep clean less than most hotels because we do have big rooms. And there is a standard, and Pat was quite right when she said that. But we're not going to less on the sections. The switchboard fault was reported two hours ago. Somebody had switched that stupid alarm off. They heard me. Since then, 400 guests have arrived, but no engineer. Good morning, Can I give you my reference number, okay, please? Hold for a few seconds, please? Not too long. No, OK. I'll Thank you. For you. Is it uh, Rainley? Sorry? Is it the... Um, um... The fat pregnant one from the Adelphi, yes, yes it yes. is. I've just been in touch with Barry Pugh. Yeah. He's aware about it. He's going to give you a ring. He can't ring me, that's why I'm phoning. Okay, I've got well. no incoming calls. Oh, I see. Well, uh, uh, going, out, going. Now, it might help. If you, if you, do you want an engineer out this weekend? Do we want an engineer out? Uh, yeah, you do, don't you, obviously? Obviously, I. Brian? Yeah? We need you down the front now. Paul, I've got three tables uncovered there. She was on her way when we left. OK, that's not a problem. Brian? Brian's bride is about to arrive, just as 53 pensioners on a weekend break try to check in. You're welcome to me. It's rooming, yeah. Yeah, this is them. For Brian and Bernie, it's a case of out with the old to make way for the new. Quickly. Just get on the bus and drive it away. The third and final bride arrives and every detail's in place. Brian's won the fight to stay on schedule and the battle for the bouquet. Hey, 
Finally, everything's perfect. Oh, no, more tissue dress? Almost. I don't know why I do this every sod in time. Butter off, get over that. I want these two side areas clean, please. Look at me. Time after time after time, I'm sick. I'm like a parrot. Ladies and gentlemen, would you kindly take your seats? The wedding breakfasts are now being served. Stir the soup. You've got the garnish. It's a minestrone soup. You want stirring. So you get plenty of garnish. There you go. All right, there's one there. What am I going to do with that one? Now, you want to wipe the... tomato soup. Are you Alice? Make sure you wipe the bowls, yes, the please. Grooms. Are you Alice? And who's having the tomato soup? One the groom. Tomato. That's the one that's marrying the bride. <laughs> that's the one without the froth on. After the minestrone soup, the chosen menu for everyone is pan-fried chicken in a brandy and mustard sauce. Oh, by the way, chef, one vegetarian. I've just told him off. I said, have you ordered the vegetarian off the bride and groom? He said, no, I didn't know he had to. Goodness gracious me. I mean, if you're a vegetarian, you've got some you know you're a vegetarian, don't you? Eh? Yeah. Unless you suddenly just decide overnight. I'm vegetarian today. Yeah, they know. They laugh, they laugh, they know. Because they're all like that. I didn't order the lamb. I ordered the turkey. No, you didn't, you did. No, you did. No, you didn't. You did. But the customer's always right. That's our business. Just, yeah, just keep trying nine and until you get the dialing tone. Okay, thank you, bye. Oh, great. It's now affected. Bedroom boards, there's not enough lines going out. Hurry up, you two. Yeah, be like Brian. Go, man, go. Easy. Take a chill pill. It's the epitome of speed, isn't it? Should have been a greyhound. <laughs> go on, go. One, two. That's the third. All done and dusted. Just like that. Excuse me. <laughs> As Brian's couple begin their wedding breakfast, Bernie's are about to start their speeches. Born ready. Are you OK if I announce this yet? Bedroom boards are OK. Fourth and sixth are just they're not be able to get outside lines, but I think that's just due to the... Christine's engineer has arrived. They're getting next door. Yeah, just let me get in touch with the duty manager and I'll get the keys for you. Duty manager, code one. Go ahead. Ben, I need to get into the cashier's office for the Bailey's telecom man. Hi, ladies and gentlemen, can I just have your attention, please? Can I give you Carl the best man, please? Bernie won't be needed again until the best man's finished his speech. It should give him plenty of time to open the door. I believe Michelle wanted a very traditional Liverpool wedding, so if you'd like to clear the tables, it's time for the fighting. <laughs> <laughs> you can, no, you can have as many chips and spuds as you want. That's why I went out and got more spuds. Chicken. You what said no, no. no. you ordered enough chicken for No, but, but we will only order enough chicken, cos... But you could have come along and said, oh, well, we might have something else out there. Would you like maybe something no, else then... happen? Because the food was beautiful. Oh, no, well, well, well honestly, we don't, we don't do that, Sissy. You're complaining about the food. And all of a sudden, you said the chips are for the children. Yeah, but like... just walked away. Like I said, I hadn't finished saving the the kids. Next time, like, next time we save potatoes, put a couple of ash trays on. Hang on, hang on, hang on. No, we don't, we, honestly, we don't. Dish, we don't. Simple reason: every wedding, there's always waiting in between courses. Intercourse cigarettes. Yeah. Sexual cigarettes. <laughs> exactly. In between each course, it's nice as they don't have a cigarette. The service was fantastic. It's just that the whole of the staff has got a slight attitude problem. Including me. Including us. <laughs> <laughs> I'm supposed to be cutting 145 pieces of wedding cake out there. Make sure 145. Oh, no, 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 and, yes, yes, yes. <laughs> and I'll put a spud on one of them. As Brian seeks a solution to Table 13's potato problem, Bernie doesn't have much time left. Well, to repair the switchboards, the chap needs to get in here, but I don't think I have a key to access it. Alice! Go and tell him to stop saving the sweet the kids are having ice cream. And what are we going to do the rest? Give the Irish table apple pie, they'd eat anything. There's a shortage of profiteroles as well as potatoes, so Brian's giving the children ice cream instead. No one's noticed. 
except for the Irish table. Well, and if the child wanted profiteroles and ice cream, would that be such a big problem? No, no, I wasn't given the child ice cream because she already had profiteroles in front. That was the only reason I wasn't given an ice yeah, cream. But you, yeah, but if you wanted both, should I have both? Oh, close! Can I have more ice cream? Delighted with life. Where was that heading? At last, the engineer can start to repair the switchboard, and Bernie's just in time to finish his formal duties. Hi, right, ladies and gentlemen, can I just have your attention, please? Can I, on behalf of the hotel, wish you both all the best for the future? When the lady starts to complain about my attitude, I thought. I couldn't understand, because I don't have a bad attitude. I do with staff sometimes, but not with customers. I mean, I give customers what they want. I'll have a drink with them later on. I'll make them buy me a drink. Brian's cut 145 pieces of cake and he's learnt his lesson. He makes sure table 13 gets seconds first, before they ask for them. Have seconds, have seconds, have seconds. <laughs> As the wedding receptions come to an end, last night's newlyweds have left. The bridal suite can at last be prepared for tonight's couple. Yeah, it's fine. It's pretty good, really, for a honeymoon couple, really. Um, Christine, your system is now okay. Am I okay? Yeah, everything's working now. I'll charge another console for you. Okay. Always another console. I've cleared the, the fault in the cable. Do you know what, Barry? You're a bloody star. Has anyone ever told you, love? Thank you very much. Star. Oh. God, that's better. Fed with these weddings. We don't try to make them feel like it's a factory, but no. to us it's like a factory. It's just like, wish it was on piecework. Happy to man. But Brian and Bernie have another 25 weddings before the end of the season. Three weeks after the three weddings, Pat decided to leave the hotel. She's now doing a less physical job with shorter hours. Packing shelves at a local cash and carry. Michelle survived not only the big day, but her honeymoon without giving birth. Today, she's brought four-month-old Callum in to meet Christine's daughter, Ellis, so they can compare notes and sizes. Met you before once. Give it in the belly then, Callum. Ellis is the older of the two. At seven months, she weighs 16 pounds. Callum is half her age, yet weighs a healthy two stone, nearly double the weight. I bet you can eat anything, yeah. anything yeah. at all. Like a sumo wrestler. Yes. <laughs> used to be Clark. Sumo. Michelle is now planning Callum's christening later this year at the Adelphi. <laughs> 